Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Playmaker. What is Playmaker? Well, it's one of the probably most popular plugins out there. It's a programming alternative for Unity. Uh, it's been around for a very long time, at least since like Unity 3, and it enables you to program Unity using uh, finite state machines. You don't have to write any code at all. Uh, so we're going to take a quick look at what Playmaker is all about, and the reason why we're talking about Playmaker is right now we're about halfway through the Unity 2019 Humble Bundle. I will toss this link down below, and I will toss the video link I did on it down below, but when I looked at it, I figured that probably the, the, the standout feature here was Playmaker. So I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a, a hands-on. You can get an idea of what working with Playmaker is all about. As you can see, you get art assets in here. You get a couple of other plugins, including Umotion Pro and the Dozy uh, Complete UI Management, Dynamic Bones. You get a bunch of art packs. You get a year of Unity Learn Premium. But the one, again, that stood out to me was Playmaker. It's normally 65 bucks, and you get it for 15 including all of this other stuff. So without further ado, let us jump in. Now, one thing to note before we move on too much further, I actually have a key for this to give away. All you have to do is drop a comment down below. I also have the results of the um, Corral Painter giveaway that I did earlier this week. Uh, that'll come out via a community post also today. I've got another giveaway to do as well. So check that uh, video, or sorry, that comment out. Uh, and hopefully you won. And hopefully you win this one. I'll let you know. I want to give everyone a chance to get in. So I'll do a drawing in it for like four or five days, sometime in the middle of next week. Okay. So without further ado, here we are in a project. This is a typical Unity project. Now, one thing that's key here is I'm using 2019.3. This just to make my life easier. Uh, what's cool about 2019.3, you'll notice I already have Playmaker installed, but I'll show you the process. So basically, if you want to install Playmaker, just come down here to Package Manager, pick uh, my assets, and this is a cool new thing that was added in 2019.3, so you can now install assets that you own from the asset store directly using it. Otherwise, you have to download it as a separate package, install it, load it into Unity, and so on. It's just a bit of a time saver. So go, go find Playmaker, so I set it to download, and then click Import once it has been downloaded. Uh, you see downloads grayed out because I have already downloaded it in this case. And then once it is downloaded, you will get this screen right here. And then what you want to do is install Playmaker. And that will install the most recent version into your game. Uh, and that's really kind of it. On top of that, we've got some uh, instructions and materials and documentation for how to work with Playmaker. Uh, it is an incredibly well-documented plugin. So uh, there's plenty of learning materials out there. But I'm going to show you the very, very basics of working with Playmaker. So I'm going to come in here and we're going to go ahead and create just a 3D object that we're going to control. So we've got a cube in our world and we're done. So now we want to attach Playmaker to it. There's a couple ways we could go about doing this. We you come in here, search for Playmaker, and then pick Playmaker FSM or Finite State Machine. Now, Finite State Machine is a very common game construct. It's, it's a way of, it's finite is literally uh, means that there's a finite amount. There's only a limit and it's not unlimited. Um, and state is, um, you can kind of be in one state or another state or another state, but not multiple states. So, and a machine, you know what a machine is. So the easiest to think of finite, a finite state machine out there is a stoplight. And where there's three states to the stoplight, stop, um, go, and then in Toronto, go like hell when it's amber. So those three states, um, kind of you can only ever be in one of them and you can transition between them and it's that kind of is the way you program your logic or your controls when you're working with playmaker now i've actually done a video explaining finite state machines and i will link that as well to give you a bit of a heads up on what's going on here you don't need to read it to understand any of this in fact all you need to do is go ahead and open up the playmaker editor now you'll notice this is a typical um window we can dock it anywhere in our world i'm going to leave it floating for this particular demo you've also got the ability to run directly from it. Um, so what we can do is go ahead and create a finite state machine. Now you'll notice we have our cube selected so we can add state machines to every object in our scene. This is like adding a script to your game object and you'll notice we get one default state right off the hop. So we'll go ahead and we will rename that state go. Now this is going to fire when starting. So when it's added to the scene and things are ready to go, then we're going to cause it to go. Now what you do is start triggering in actions. So come here, you've got action browsers and you've got a ton of different actions that are available. And these are all, these are categories and within them, there's a ton of apps. So uh, if you want to work with animations, you've got tools here for switching between animations, playing them, stopping them and so on. Um, you got application type stuff, so you can quit your app, you can get the Windows resolution, so on. Uh, we got some stuff here for debugging, split, just printing stuff out to the log. You got access to game object and all the normal things that you would do with game objects. So you can get um, the children of a game object, you could add a child, and so on. Um, so all of the stuff you would traditionally do using C Sharp is pretty much exposed through these action systems. What we're going to do is just a very simple one. And I'm going to come here and go transform, and we're going to do a move towards. Very simple, we'll double click, add that to our scene. Now what we can do, we can actually add 
I didn't mean to do that. We can add multiple uh, actions so we could have rotated at the same time and it would move towards and rotate. Here, I'll actually go ahead and do that. So add a rotate as well. See, make sure there's not a rotate by. Okay, so rotate. So we have a move towards and a rotate now applied on the go state. Um, so the move towards runs over time. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this one to, we're gonna move towards 10 and we're going to do so quite slowly. So you'll see for each particular action, there are all the things defined. You can also explicitly specify which game object works with. By default, the target object will be the game object, that the, the owner of this actual finite state machine. So you see you've got, um, you also can fire off another event. So when this is actually done, if we had another event defined, so I could create an event here. Uh, so for example, I could call this done moving, like so. And then we could just go ahead and fire off that done moving event when this state is done. Now, I'm not actually using that, so I'll go back to none. But you see how you can have one state then transition into another state easily enough. Um, so we could do here, we could create a new vector, but what I'm gonna just do is we're gonna say rotate around Z, click here. I think this is in degrees, so we'll do two degrees around Z. Now I think this is only gonna run once, so it's probably not gonna do much, but I'm just gonna show you we can do two things at the same time. And we'll go ahead and play the scene. Get the window out of the way. See, we're rotating, so it is happening at the same time and we are moving towards that axis. Very simple, that's really, um, that's it. That's all you need to do. Now, one of the things that you're gonna probably find um, is you're gonna wanna work with multiple events. As I mentioned, we could trigger off an event when we get to our destination. So when move towards is done, it could fire off an event. Let's show a simple like on off style approach. So let's go uh, and we'll stop playing here. By the way, I could have fired that stuff off this way as well. Uh, so I'm gonna come here and I am going to Remove all of the actions, so none of the actions are belong to us. So we've got no actions applied here. We could do it with events. So you got here, we've got a number of different events we can respond to. See here over in the event browser windows, pretty common stuff. So UI events, physics events, colliding with a, poly, um, with a particle, for example, uh, application pause, quit, and everything else like that. But I'm just gonna come down here instead. I'm gonna say add global transition. We could also just create our own state. So we could here we'll go um, call it all done. So we can manually create our own events that way, but I'm gonna do it with a global transition instead. And then come down here, do a system event, and then I will do this as mouse over. So when the mouse is over, uh, then we'll do our translation. So let's go back here to, so there, mouse over, add the action. Translation should already be down here somewhere. Yeah, so uh, let's do translate. So set this guy to 0.2. All right, so go ahead and run that. All right, so the mouse is over, and there you see. And you can see what's green because that state is currently running. Now, I think I did, oh, I need to, all right. So we're gonna keep running because we're constantly in this particular state. So let's go back, uh, where's my stop? Here, turn that off. Now let's add another state. System events, mouse, exit. And then what we'll do in this state is we'll snap back to zero, zero, and zero. So set position, add that in. You, you, and you. All right, so there, when we leave focus, we're now gonna zoom away. So let's go ahead and run. Uh, da, 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 da. So, mouse over, mouse out, mouse over, mouse out. And now you'll notice at the bottom there, and I can't show you using my mouse, unfortunately, but you'll see state one is currently selected when we're mousing over, and then when we leave focus, state two is selected, and that is the currently running. So that's how you can easily transition between states, and essentially that is it. Like that, that is how you do the majority of your programming. You can do things on top. You can create uh, global variables. We can add a new one of various different types. So, uh, meaning of life, for example, we add that guy in there. That was of type float. So we could change out its types. So we could make that variable a game object or a texture, or a general object, an array of things, and so on. And then of course we have all of the ability to go ahead and modify and change these values. If we go back here to uh, states, you'll see that there's um, 
there's tools in here for changing uh, variable values. Uh, we can convert, we oops, we've got conversion or casting of various different types there. Um, so you've got all of your, your logic is available in here. Everything is mapped down into these, uh, these actions. That's where a lot of the logic is hidden away. And that kind of is, in a nutshell, a playmaker. It's a very straightforward way of programming. And again, you can expose uh, values out of Playmaker or events out of Playmaker that can be called by C-sharp code. Then you can respond to C-sharp code events in your Playmaker. So you can, you can mix and match the two programming styles quite easily. And you can also extend Playmaker, create your own um, actions and so on that you can uh, program using C sharp and then make available in Playmaker. Now, one of the really cool things here, and I haven't installed it yet, so I'm going to show you this process. So um, and come up here, you will see there's this tool, this category called add-ons. You say download add-ons. And then what we're going to need to do is install the ecosystem browser. And this is the entire ecosystem that's built around Playmaker. Just go ahead and download it. We'll open this up in the default. Da, 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 and do an import. So once this is done, we will now have access to the Playmaker ecosystem. Now this is actually external uh, to Playmaker itself, so be careful with it. It's downloading projects off of uh, uh, GitHub, uh, so someone could theoretically do something malicious. So just do be aware, you're running arbitrary code run off the internet when you do this. But now we have Playmaker's ecosystem installed, so come up here to add-ons. And now we have a bunch of different options here. One you're going to probably be most interested in is this one under ecosystem. And we'll bring up the ecosystem browser. So right here. And once again, you get a bit of a warning basically saying, yeah, we're using this off the internet. And yes, I want to go ahead and do it. Now the straightforward, pretty straightforward so far. What we can just do is come up here and go browse and get everything that is available in the ecosystem. So there you see. So if you need additional codes, you wanted to do LZF decompression of a string, you can grab it. It's available right there. You can see the version that it was created for. And as you can see, it has been around for a very long time. So let's say if we were just interested in extending the physics functionality and you could spell physics. So just come up here, do a physics search and there. So you see all of the different community provided extensions for Playmaker. So a lot of times, like if you, if you wanted to have the ability to shoot a missile, boom. You now can go ahead, it will download and give you the capability, we'll import that in, and now you have uh, an additional ability to uh, shoot a missile, it's actually a sample in this particular case, which was a bad, bad example. <laughs> uh, we also, by the way, can filter that down, so if you just want new actions, you can get them here. Uh, if you want templates, you can get them there, samples and so on, so we just want actions, filter that there, and then we'll go here, say shoot, and we'll search, and this is all of the shooting actions Action. Okay, so there you go. So you got physics shooting is now imported. That was actually part of the sample that we already got. So it's there already. Uh, say we wanted, um, again, let's see, maybe something about sound. So there you go. So you got actions here. So if you wanted to stop recording the microphone, uh, play simple audio, um, various different other things, advanced audio capabilities, so on. Then these now are available. So we'll go ahead, we'll do this advanced audio. We'll go ahead and get that. You'll see it's the same process. So this is an action that we just added in. And that's how easy it is to extend Playmaker. So you notice now, if we go back here into this guy, go back to the editor, grab an action here, you'll notice under the action browser, we've got physics shoot. So if we search for it, there it is. There is the action we just added in. Now, the cool thing about this is it enables uh, basically you to share your work with other people. So if you're a non-programmer and you're running into a problem, like you need to be able to add physics-based shooting, you can just check the community and there's a good chance that they've already implemented it for you. And so it's just a matter of stringing together all of these little diff distinct pieces into these finite state machines. And this is a very simple state machine. So you can get a whole lot more complicated. You can branch between different states and so on. You can have it go from this to that to that and so on. I, I'm not getting into those specifics or details on this example. So the final thing I want to talk about before moving on is that this guy has actually been used for making quite a few games that you've probably heard of. It was used to make Observation. It was used, it was helped on, on a Hearthstone. Um, so it enables their art team art team to make uh, events, uh, you know, so they don't have to get a programmer involved and programmer could write the things. And then the art team just goes ahead and consumes them. Um, so you, you're doing a Hollow Knight, um, Inside, Veilguard, The First Tree, High Hell, Poi, Super Arcade Shooter, Virginia, uh, Dreamfall Chapters, Rise and Shine, Combat Core, uh, as you can see, so this has been used in, in a number of games you've definitely heard of. Dear Esther, um, yeah, 
So I, I'm going to stop reading them off to you. But as you can see, it is definitely a production tested, um, robust system. And as I said, you can you can have movement between states and conditional branching like so on. So I just showed you a very, very, very simple um, finite state machine in this particular case. But it gives you an idea of the kind of things that in the real world Playmaker is being used for. So that's it. I, I would be very interested in hearing uh, what you think of it. Have you used Playmaker? Does it look like a good alternative to uh, straight out uh, you know, traditional programming to you? Or um, can you see kind of like the Hearthstone approach where your programmer exposes things into uh, Playmaker events and actions and then you, you implement them um, by your designers so you can have that nice separation there? Or do you think this is all terrible and crap and should die in a fire? I'm interested to hear what your opinion is. And if you've used Playmaker and you've got an opinion, I'd love to hear it down below as well. The thing that really shines though is that ecosystem, especially if you're new and you need to kind of when you run into a wall with this kind of stuff, a lot of times you ran into a wall. In this particular case, a lot of times, you know, the community may have provided a ladder for you, which is just a simple search away. So once again, it is available in that bundle. I will link all of the relevant things down below, and I am doing a giveaway. And if you're interested, just drop the fact that you're interested in the comment down below. And uh, good luck, everybody. All right. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.